ladies, it's Dr. Jessica Ridge here again, and we're here for part three of Endometriosis Awareness Month. If you haven't already, check out part one where I introduce endometriosis, and part two where we talk about the surgical options. In part three here, we're gonna talk about options outside of surgery to treat endometriosis and the symptoms related to it. Now, there are a lot of surgeons out there that believe that the surgical approach is the only approach to the treatment of endometriosis. And while surgery is very beneficial, I do believe that there are other approaches. Just having repeated surgeries over and over again is not the solution for every woman because surgery always has risks and recovery time associated with it. And really what our goals are, are to manage the symptoms of endometriosis. And those symptoms are things like pain and infertility in very rare cases, cancers can um, arise from endometriosis. So what are some of the non-surgical approaches that can help endometriosis? First of all, I always like to think about lifestyle factors that can be helpful. And this doesn't mean that, you know, if we just eat this a little bit differently or move a little bit differently, that all of the symptoms and all of the endometriosis will go away, but it can really be helpful to support symptoms. So definitely eating a healthy and balanced diet to um, support your, um, your body and to have a more of like an anti-inflammatory type diet can be helpful for your endometriosis symptoms. In the same way, exercise can be helpful. And this isn't the same type of exercise at every point in your cycle. Some days it may be just enough to really get out of bed, maybe go for a walk or do a little stretching or yoga. And other days you may be able to do more movement, but keeping the body moving can be helpful for sure. There are herbal supplements that can be helpful at mitigating the symptoms of endometriosis. Particularly, I like one that's called Elix that you can find at elixhealing.com. They use a traditional Chinese and herbal medicine approach to finding a blend of herbs that will be best to support your period. And they do a great job of showing what they're using and why. And I think that can be really helpful for a lot of women. Beyond that, there are a lot of other things that can be helpful, and particularly things like mindset work. And that's not to say that the symptoms of endometriosis are in your head because they are not. This is a physical condition with physical symptoms, but the way it affects our minds um, can really be devastating for some. And also our minds or our moods can affect how we feel those symptoms in our body. So talking with a psychologist or a therapist or talking with a coach that can help you through that mindset Mindset. If that's not an option for you, working with a support group and working with a trusted friend or relative who really will listen and help you kind of work through those symptoms that you have can be really helpful. In addition to that, things like acupuncture can be really helpful in treating the symptoms of, of um, endometriosis, and there are good studies showing benefits from acupuncture, and also physical therapy, as oftentimes the um, symptoms of endometriosis can cause tension and muscle spasms, scar tissue and pain that really can benefit from a pelvic floor physical therapist. <music> Beyond the lifestyle modifications, the mindset modifications, and the sort of alternative treatments, of course, there are medical therapies that can be helpful with endometriosis. And most often, the first therapy that's tried for most women is something like a birth control pill or a patch or a ring. Basically, what this is, is it's a combination of estrogen and progesterone that instead of you having these sort of fluctuations that naturally occur during the menstrual cycle, which can lead to more pain and symptoms of endometriosis, keeps you at sort of a low stable level of hormones which suppresses some of the growth of the endometriosis and suppresses the symptoms. This can either be used cyclically so that you still get your periods but less painful than before and usually less heavy as well or it can be used continuously so that you don't get a period at all and it's perfectly safe to do that without getting a period. Of course there are risks and benefits to those medications and they're not for everybody so it is important to talk with your doctor whether that may be an okay approach for you. 
If you can't use those approaches or if you've tried them and they haven't really worked for you, then sometimes a progesterone only method might be better for you. And this can be progesterone only pills that sometimes go into higher doses or things like IUDs that are little T's that go inside the uterus and secrete some progesterone. And for some women, they have more effects. There tends to be a little bit more irregular bleeding with these methods, but if it can control your pain and control your symptoms and if it has less side effects for you than the combined methods, then that might be a better approach for you. Beyond that, there are um, medications that affect the hormones from sort of higher up in the pathway. So there are hormones in your brain and the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland that affect the hormones in your ovaries. And we can kind of stop that pathway a little bit higher up with medications that affect GnRH. Traditionally, this was with a medication called Depo-Lupron that was often given in an injection, either one month or three months. More recently, we have a medication called Oralissa that approaches it a little bit differently, but along the same pathway, which is a daily oral medication in two different doses. These medications aren't usually first line as they tend to have more side effects than the other medications, particularly menopausal type side effects. So things like hot flushes and mood changes and changes in weight. Not everybody gets those side effects, of course, but it can be one of the um, problems that we have with those medications. They can also cause changes in your bone density. So it's not a long-term solution, and it's important that you do that under the guidance of uh, a gynecologist who has experience using those types of medications. <music> The bottom line is that endometriosis is not something that's best treated with a one-size-fits-all approach. Each of us individually are different people and we're going to respond to things differently and we're going to have different goals and desires and different ways that we feel the symptoms, different ways that we feel the treatments. So it's really important to find somebody who's going to work with you, who's going to listen to what's important to you and to what you're feeling and to not give up on you when the first thing fails. Oftentimes the first treatment we try is not gonna be the treatment that you do in the long term. So it's important to be able to find a practitioner that you can work with who will really stick with you and, and work through the sort of ups and downs of that condition. And it's important to keep hope and just know that there are a lot of options out there and we are here to support you with them.